Today we take up uh, example 3 in the plain sailing questions in the topic of coastal navigation or ocean navigation. Uh, the links to the previous examples are in the description section below so you should watch them as well. They all are different examples and uh, you will learn better by following all the examples and learning from it. So as you probably know plain sailing is used when the distance involved between two positions is less than 600 nautical miles. We can assume that the earth is flat and the curvature of the earth is not taken into account uh, in terms of distance calculation. We assume that uh, flat lines can be drawn as courses between two positions. So let's get started with the question. The question says we have to calculate the bearing and the distance of position 915.3 south, 178, 48.5 west from the vessel's position 114.5 south, 179, 55.1 east using the plain sailing method. Now normally we have seen before that we have calculated course and distances between positions but here you have to read the question carefully. It says calculate the bearing of position, uh, the first position and you have to calculate the bearing from uh, this position here. So that is why be very careful on how you are reading the question. It's not a course and distance uh, question between the two positions. So the first, the second position is given initially and the first position is given later. That's why I have put this position here from which you have to calculate the bearing as A. This is the initial position and what I say is the bearing can be said bearing or course. So if you have to calculate the bearing from this position to the other position, then this position becomes the first position. And I have to calculate the bearing uh, of the position B from position A. Alright, so read the question carefully before you start with it. So the two positions are marked and I have drawn the uh, plane setting diagram. I draw this to get an idea of how the bearing or how the course would be. Of course the side AB here becomes the distance between the two positions. Uh, this vertical distance is D lat and this vertical, this horizontal distance is departure. Alright, so make sure you draw the diagram first get an idea of how it is placed uh, so that when you are doing your calculations uh, you can uh, do a cross check with your calculations. You should be very clear on what is happening before you start with the question. So I write, then I write down the two positions. I have written down the lat and long of position A and lat and long of position B. Uh, once I have the two latitudes, uh, the rule of thumb is uh, same names subtract and different names add. Here I have both south, so same names. So I will subtract uh, because uh, I'm going from uh, south towards uh, lesser south. So from 11 degrees south, I'm going towards 9 degrees south. So I can going in a direction of uh, northerly direction. My resultant D lat would be north. Right. So again, we are only calculating bearing here. We are not calculating courses here, but I'm treating the question same as how I would if I was calculating a course and distance. So because they are same names, I will subtract them, but I will name it north because the vessel is kind of uh, looking in a north direction or proceeding in a north direction. So 11 degrees 4.5 minus 9 degrees 15.3 gives me 1 degree 49.2. All right, 1 degrees 49.2, but I have to convert this into minutes. So what will I do? I will multiply uh, the degree only by 60. So 1 multiplied by 60 will give me 60 and then I will add the remaining minutes to it 49.2 and that will give me 109.2 so this is my answer 109.2 I've converted the degrees into minutes all right similarly I've got the longitude of A and longitude of B the same rule applies uh, different names you will add it and same names you will subtract it because they are different names you will add the two but if the addition is more than 360, then you will subtract it from 360 because D long can never be more than 360. So what happens here? Oh, sorry, D long can never be more than 180. All right. So if it's more than 360, you will subtract it from 360. So over here, you see if I add the two, 179 degrees 55.1 minutes plus 178 degrees 48.5 minutes, the answer I get is 358 degrees. 43.6 minutes all right because I said it cannot be more than 180 what will you do 
you will subtract it from 360 when you subtract it from 360 what you get is 001 degrees 16.4 minutes and this is what you have here 001 degrees 16.4 now why is this east and why is a here and b here that's because you are very close to the anti meridian all right so normally if you go from east to west you cannot say i'm going in easterly direction you will say i'm going in a westerly direction but in this case what is happening is you are very close to the anti meridian what is anti meridian anti meridian is 180 degrees it is not 000 degrees it's not the prime meridian it's on the opposite side of the prime meridian it is 180 degrees when it is 180 degrees here and you're facing it then this side becomes west and this side becomes east because you are very close to 180 so if you are saying 178 degrees 48.5 minutes west 178 48.5 minutes west becomes this side and 179 degrees 55.1 minutes becomes east becomes on the this side so if i'm going from here to here i'm going in the easterly fashion all right so if it was uh, 000 degrees then of course this side is east and this side is west but this is not the case here because it's very close to the anti meridian all right so now again d long coming back to d long i've got d long as 001 degrees 16.4 minutes how do i convert it into minutes i will only multiply the degree by 60 multiply the degree by 60 again 60 by 1 is 60 and re add the remaining minutes to it plus 16.4 minutes what do i get 76.4 minutes and of course it is east now why i have named my d light and d long will come very handy when i am deciding the course now in this case of course it's the bearing but uh, i'll show you how it all comes into play when it's the course otherwise if you can see the previous examples as well now if i've got the two latitudes i can also calculate what are known as the m lat or the mean latitude so what do i do i can take latitude a so what i do i'll remove all this just clutter so latitude a plus latitude b just add the two and divide by two now this is holds true if they are of the same names like is in this case if they were different names you would subtract the two and divide by two all right there's a separate video on calculation of mean lat you can find it in the description section watch it and you will learn how to calculate the mean lat as well so you add the two latitudes and you divide it by two and you get your mean latitude 10 degrees 9.9 .9 minutes you can name it south if you want to because both are south but it's not important in this case then it's simply a question of putting the values in the formula so the first formula we'll be using is departure departure equals d long multiplied by cos of mean lat you know the d long always write the answer in minutes so it's 76.4 minutes and then m lat cos 10 degrees 9.9 .9. Now remember, you will write d long in minutes is because you can only write it in degrees if there is a sine, cos, tan, cosecant, cotangent, uh, secant uh, preceding it. If there is no cos, sine, tan, cotangent, whatever preceding it, you have to write the d lat, d long departure all in minutes. So that's why d long is in minutes. So d long multiplied by cos of m lat will give you a departure of 75.2 minutes. Departure is a unit of distance. It's, there is no east or west with departure then i first thing i do is calculate the course so the course here is tan of course equals departure by d lat you know the value of departure 75.2 you also know d lat 109.2 again like i said you will write it in minutes if there is no sign cos and tan you will write the values in minutes not in degrees so 75.2 divided by 109.2 will give you 0 0.68864 take tan to the other side to find the course it becomes tan inverse tan inverse of the other side you go is 34.5 degrees now because i will not call this course i will call this bearing and the bearing is northeast so where why northeast because you can see from the diagram as well that the b is bearing northeast from a and also from your d lat and d long your d lat is north your d long is east if i name it northeast here 
your true bearing becomes 034.5 degrees true all right this comes from d lat this comes from d long so your vessel the other position is bearing 0345.5 degrees true from your vessel finally you will calculate the distance the formula for the distance is distance equals d lat divided by cos of course you know your d lat is 109.2 again you will write it in minutes and the cos course is 034.5 so you can write 034.5 here and cos here so of course it's in degrees because you have a cos preceding it but the d lat is in minutes because there is no sine cos tan cotangent cosecant or secant preceding it then simply divide 109.2 by cos 034.5 you can put this exactly like this in your scientific calculator what you get is 132.5 minutes or 132.5 nautical miles now whenever you get your answer in the calculator do not get confused whether it's degrees or not common sense should tell you 132.5 degrees would be a huge value one degree equals 60 minutes so if you are getting confused as to whether 132.5 degrees or is it 132.5 minutes it has to be minutes because plain sailing is for distances less than 600 nautical miles and 132.5 degrees will be multiplied by 60 to calculate the distance it will be more than seven or eight thousand nautical miles so it cannot be degrees so use your common sense here and make sure you write the answer based on your common sense so here it will be minutes all right so that's pretty much it for the plane sailing example three here i'll take up more examples so that you guys can practice with more examples and get an idea of how to solve questions like this in the exam bye for now